y'all to one day teach the program in one of y'all uh, counties, one of y'all communities, and that's the purpose of it. Everybody said to attain my sobriety is easy. Attain my sobriety is easy. My challenge is, my challenge is to maintain it. To maintain it. To attain our sobriety is easy. To attain our sobriety is easy. Our challenge is, our challenge is to maintain it. To maintain it. The word obtain means to come into the possession of something. But the word maintain means to keep it in existence. And the reason why I came up with those two words is because I noticed in my own personal life, 22 years of struggling with drugs and um, alcohol and prison and all that, I noticed that I was easily able to obtain my sobriety. So I'm sitting in this rehab and I was trying to figure out, man, I always get my sobriety. It's very easy. I'll just go away. I'll just get locked up. I always obtain my sobriety. And I discovered that my challenge wasn't that. My challenge was maintaining it. Everybody say, to attain my sobriety is easy. To attain my sobriety is easy. My challenge is my challenge to maintain it. To maintain it. You have to maintain it. Right now, hopefully, no one's under the influence of any type of drugs. <laughs> and Right now, you should, you are, <laughs> you have, I said that because I used to find drugs at the warehouse and stuff. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, listen, I, 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 but, but once you obtain your sobriety, you have that. You don't have to put no more effort in getting your sobriety again. You have it now. Everything that's in you right now, you have to put in maintaining what you have already obtained. <coughs> So while you're here, while everybody might be doing the opposite of what you should be doing, you have to distance yourself from them and tell them, listen, I'm not racist. I don't, I, I'm not against what your religion is. I'm focused on maintaining my sobriety. And if you're not focused on what I'm focused on, I don't care what color you are, what county you came from, what mom or dad you had or didn't have. You, if you're not focused on maintaining what you have, like me, I don't want to deal with you right now. You have to be that type of focus in order for you to succeed. You can't wait to get focused like that outside of here. If you can develop an appetite to maintain your sobriety in here by orchestrating or dealing with the people who are around you, your chances are very high when you leave out of here. Again, our motto is anywhere but backwards. Everybody say anywhere, anywhere but backwards. But back. That came from Jeremiah 7, 24. And it says, yet they did not obey and inclined their ear to me, but they kept following the counsel of their own hearts, and they kept going backwards instead of forward. Everybody say anywhere, anywhere but backwards. But backwards. Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen to me. Last week, like I told all of you, my father was in the hospital. And I come back a week late, later, Friday, my father has gone on and been be with the Lord. He has passed away. And for me to actually be here with you right now, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's Monday. The only reason I'm here is because my purpose is greater than my struggles. The bracelet that y'all have more than I have my wife give y'all is not just a saying to me. <clears throat> and I honestly want us to be right now at my mother's house like a little kid. Comforting my mom. Let me tell you something that I learned about the strength of my mom. The strength from my mom and my father, what I learned from my parents is amazing. Now, granted, when you have a death in the family, when a wife or a husband suffers the death of their spouse. When people come over your house, they're supposed to come over to their house to do what for you? Come on. <laughs> Yesterday, somebody came over to our house, my mom's house. They were crying more than my mother. And my mother was over there, it's gonna be all right. So my wife said, like, hold on. The next person come over here crying, I'm kicking them out. Because the purpose of you coming <laughs> but my mom was like, yeah, it's going to be all right. My wife looked at her and said, your husband died, not her. <laughs> but it showed something about my parents. That's the 
type of strength that I possess in me. That even though in the midst of adversity, I'm able to do what I am called to do. Everybody say anywhere. Anywhere. But back. back. Let's go to work. And the beauty about it is, man, I'm so excited. I, 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 I don't want to say I can't wait for my father's dream. But my father had a drug addiction as well. But he came, he defeated his giant, and he defeated his addiction and had like 20 or 30 years away from it. And while I was in it, he used to preach to me and tell me that I could do it too. And I just didn't believe it. Because I'm like, I can't do what you do, man. You one of them, you ever know them type of, like, I don't want to say some men ain't men. But you know one of them man's man's? One of them, like, when you, you shake their hand, you be like, man. He's one of them type of men. And the beauty of it is, he seen, he lived long enough to see what he told me I could do. Amen. So I have the beautiful honor to preach my own father's fruit. Amen. I'm so pumped up. Mm. I'm gonna preach my father's fruit. Just to show him, I got it, Dad. Your boy did it. He able, he was able to see when he told me I couldn't, what I could do, even though I didn't believe. Everybody say anyway. Anyway. Look back. So I got extra motivation on not going back. Because I want my dad to have the last memory of seeing me on this side. What I was doing. Page 25. It's a system. I'll show you what I mean. It says, when two armies are at war and one of the armies wants to give up because they realize that they are defeated, they wave a white flag. Or when, when a boxer is taking a beating in the ring and the corner wants to stop the fight, they throw in the white tie. In this case, meaning your life, you are the one with the white flag or the towel in your hand and you and only you have the power to wave it or throw it in. And that's called surrendering. And surrendering is the key to your victory. Everybody say surrender. Surrender. You have the towel in your hand. When a boxer's in the ring, my best friend, the band, when he was in the ring, if the person he was fighting, if he was beating him down, the corner, his opponent's corner, had that towel and they would throw it in. And I used to ask my, my best friend, what that mean? He said, he surrendered. He quit. Meaning, now right now, in this recovery walk that you have with these addictions, you have the towel in your hand. But only you, you don't have somebody in your corner that has to throw it in. You possess that ability to surrender. So you have to throw the white towel in. Right now, in an in, in imaginary sense, everybody throw the towel in. Why you ain't throwing your hand up? Everybody throw their hand It might mean, seem simple, but I'm telling you, I told y'all in the beginning of the introduction before, that minor adjustments deal with simplicity. You simply have to throw the towel in. Everybody say, I can't change the system. I can't change the system. In a computer, if you don't have to be a computer genius, but in a computer, if you order something in a computer, when you punch in your information for a credit card, let's say you're buying something, and you punch in the information, you order what you wanted, close it out, you get off the computer. If you go back to the same computer, then go to try to order something else again, and you start punching in credit card numbers, anybody know what happens? Come on, anybody say it. It starts to pop up. What's that? That's called auto-field. And what that system is doing is the system is trying to predict that you're going to use the same information that you used before. Now, I'm saying all that to say this. The system is trying to predict or is going to predict that you're going to do the exact same thing you did before. But the only way to change that autofill system, you have to manually change it. Punch in a new information. Why am I saying that? When you're in here and you leave, the addiction world is thinking you're going to do the same thing you did before when you come back. Come on. But you're going to have to change the system. So when that person, get, when you get out and the people who are still out there using and doing everything, 
and you come out there clean, they're going to try to feed you the same thing they used to feed you before. But you got to change the system. You got to let them know, I don't do that no more. And please, I need you to show me a little bit more respect. Because honestly, it's a disrespectful thing for you even to come up to me and offer it to me. That's right. So in order for you to surrender, you have to start at that level too. Because the system is going to predict. He going to do that again. He clean. He might got a couple of hours on him too. Usually we, they, we save up a couple of hours. So when we come back shining, the person ain't got nothing like, if I give him one bump. Just one. Just one. If I can start him off, I get the whole while. Off the races. But you got to change the information that you're feeding that system. And the only way you can do that is by surrendering. And surrendering is the key to the victory. The word surrender means to give up, relinquish, abandon, or to just let go. Somebody said, let it go. Let it go. Who or what has you not surrendered? If this is not our first time in the rehabilitation center, then it's obviously, instead of us going forward, we must have went back. Yeah, y'all are real smart. I know you knew that word. <laughs> if, 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 if we're in here for more than our first time, one time, this ain't our first time in a rehab, not this rehab, a rehab period. If we're in here and it's not our first time, then obviously we went backwards instead of forward. So the question is, who or what has you not surrendered? What's stopping some of y'all from surrendering? Anybody? It could be insecurity, it could be something. What is it? Ego. You like the lifestyle. That's what you said? Anybody else, huh? Ego. Ego. Anybody else? Come on. What's something stopping you? Because you had an opportunity at it before, but you went back to it. So what's, stop, what's stopping you from throwing in the top? What's stopping you from surrendering? Fear. Oh, and Yourself? Yeah. Fear. Good God. Fear. Anybody else? Relationship. Relationship, good ones. Parents, huh? Parents. Ah, oh, yeah, that's true. Not enough pain. Not enough pain. God, okay. When we're thinking about surrender, this is the this is the analogy I always use. I use it for myself. It's like this. My life was. I'm speaking for me. My life was like it was like God because I have a spiritual foundation, which is which is my 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 belief in God. My spiritual foundation, it was like God trying to pull me out of using crack cocaine, heroin, committing crime, and doing all that stupid stuff. But it was like I was holding on to it. God, I was in a tug of war with God. He's trying to pull me out of it, and I'm telling him, man, hold on. He's like, no, I got something better. And I'm like, hold on. But all I really had to do was let that go, and I was going to walk into something better. But I had to surrender this. So the whole time, yeah, it's nothing too hard for God, but it was hard for me to let go of my old past because it was a lifestyle that I enjoyed because nobody actually uses drugs they don't like. The reason why we do it is because we like it. <clears throat> but we have to get to a place where we want to surrender that old lifestyle for something better. We're in a tug of war, and the only way you're going to find out, you need to find out who's stopping me from surrendering. Or what's stopping me? Why won't, why, why won't, why do I keep going back? If you ever heard this term, it's a term, it's a Bible verse, I'm not, it's a proverb. And the proverb, it says, like a dog returned to its vomit, so will a man or a woman repeat their folly. Now, I never really understood, I love the scripture, but I never really understood what it meant. And then I got it not, not too long ago, and I'm going to tell you, and once I tell you, you're going to say, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But the reason why we repeat what we repeat is the reason why the dog eats his vomit. If you notice when a dog spits up, the dog goes back and licks up his vomit. The reason why he <coughs> licks it up is because he believed that he's eating the stuff he ate when he initially ate it which was something good. It was good to him. So when he spit it up, he's thinking, ho, oh, <laughs> that was the steak, my boy. This is this the steak right here that I had. So when we're doing drugs, it felt good. 
So we go back to our vomit thinking this felt good. But it's not the same thing. It will never, ever be like your first time. And the only reason we keep doing it is because we're chasing that first time. Let me give you a secret. That first time will never be the same. You can take 20 years off. <laughs> Go try it. It will never be <coughs> the first time we did it. Everybody say anyway. <laughs> what do you think about a person who gives up? <coughs> Y'all can answer that. What do you think about a person who gives up? Okay. What's the hardest area for you to surrender or change? What's the hardest area for you to surrender or change? Pride. Huh? Pride. Pride. <coughs> Your mindset. <coughs> mindset. <coughs> Negative thinking, mindset, behavior. behavior. What's the hardest area for you to change? Behavior. Change the system. Huh? You mean the system for change? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we we. I'm going to beat this system up. We steady getting more smoked out. Anybody else? What's the hardest area for you to surrender or change? It's behavior. Change. Huh? Behavior. Behavior. Yeah. <coughs> hmm? Change, listen, change must be structured. All patterns get reinforced <coughs> unless a new discipline is introduced to override the old pattern. What does that mean? Change, if you want to change, let's use his analogy, thinking. <coughs> In order for you to change your old patterns, you have to introduce your old pattern with a new behavior. In order for you to override it, if you, if you just go off of your old patterns, you'll come here, you'll get clean, you'll, you'll get, feel good about yourself, you get out, you go back to the same neighborhood, and we do it all over. You come in here, you go home, you do the same thing. That's a pattern. But the only way to change that, you have to feed your old pattern with some new information. You can build it on your spiritual foundation. Me personally, I took the, I used to go to NA and AA. I started on that foundation and then I built my spiritual foundation. I still knew that I had to feed my old pattern with some new information. So I, I, I sucked in everything I could with NA and AA. Then I got into my relationship with my high power at my church. I started doing things around the church and I started feeding myself new information. I didn't just wing it off of the old information. If you keep going off the old pattern, you're going to keep getting the same result. You can always judge yourself if you truly surrendered, if you're feeding your brain new information. While y'all are here, y'all have one thing. Y'all have a testimony in your hand of a man who did and sat in the same seat you're sitting in. So don't just sit here and say, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can take some of the books that you read in this particular little workbook. You can build it off of some stuff that you're studying on your own. Don't just go to work in the warehouse and the trucks and everything and just say, well, my day is over. Mm -mm, no, it ain't. Because your day wasn't over when you was getting high. Sleep wasn't even an option. I can't miss getting high. You sleep. Sleep wasn't an option. So if you, you're going to have to sacrifice sleep sometime. Get up earlier. If they got you getting up at 6, learn to get up at 5. Feed your brain. Don't just go through the old patterns. I'm telling you, if you leave here and you don't feed yourself new information, new information, you're going to go off of the old pattern. You have change must be structured. Everybody say change. Change. Must be structured. Must be structured. Old patterns, old patterns. Get, reinforced get reinforced unless, unless a new discipline, a new discipline. is introduced to override, to override the old pattern. I'm going to print that out and get it to all y'all. Mm -hmm. Change must be structured. In order for you to change, man or woman, in order for you to change, like he said, his negative thinking, in order for you to change negative thinking, it must be structured. And what's the structure? you got to feed it new information. 
If you don't feed it new information, you're going to keep getting the same result. And I'm not telling you by something I read. I'm telling you something I did for 22 years until August 2009. And this past August, that was nine years, I have been clean. Nine years, I have been, <laughs> I have been feeding my old pattern. Structured information, new information, finding new information. Have you ever thought about surrender? Do a part of you want to truly surrender anybody? <laughs> the solution, do you ever, it says, do a part of you want to truly surrender? The solution begins, watch this, y'all, with a paradox. Victory is achieved through surrender, not battle. You gain, and I said surrender is the key to the victory. That's the title of the chapter. Surrender, surrender, victory is achieved through surrender, not fighting. Like I'm saying, a lot of people keep trying to fight the system. Like, I'm going to beat this system. The, <laughs> the drug system, the, 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 the addiction system is undefeated if you keep playing with it. You can all, you can't, you can't get victory in it by battling it. No, I'm gonna do it and you ain't gonna make me dope sick. Oh, you do it, you're gonna get dope sick. You gotta, your, your, your victory is in you surrendering and saying, you know what? This lifestyle is not for me anymore. Your surrender is not in you battling it, this thing. Don't battle it. Just get out of it. It's going to always be somebody who want to try something. You know how many people you talk to and you, you did something and you know that ain't going to work and they sitting there trying to convince you it's going to work and you sitting there like, you know what? You start giving them, say you fixing something and you, you fixed it, you know how to fix it. You good at tools, you good at stuff. And somebody telling you this, this, they don't even have the right nuts and the bolts and you sitting there like, no. And you start giving them the tools like, hey, go ahead, let me see you. Because <laughs> you already know this is not going to, I know it ain't going to work. They turn the water on water everywhere. <laughs> but you, you ain't even giving them tools. That's how addiction is. Addiction will try to get you, drugs will try to get you to negotiate. Mm -hmm. But you won't really be. You only get victory by surrendering, not battling the drug. Trying to show the drug that I can handle you. Mm -hmm. And that's how most people leave rehabilitation centers and they die. Because they think they got the same type of system when they left. And soon as they do one bag, it's so, <laughs> The tolerance and everything is totally different. They trying to battle the drug, so you gotta surrender to that. So many people I encounter each day struggle with the idea of surrender. It is almost as if they will, they will have developed barriers, page 31, around their hearts that keeps the world at an emotional distance. Recognizing those obstacles, that stand in your way is the first step toward a strong faith that you can surrender. One of the key obstacles to surrendering is what? Pride. Somebody said that. <laughs> Yo, the heart of the earth is surrender. You see my pride. Listen, we may not all admit this, but all of us have this in abundance. The good news is there is a known cure called what? Without a doubt, it will take a humble person to surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle. Like he was saying, if I'm telling you, in addition, the, one of the main things why a man or a woman won't surrender is because of their pride. It's something that they're trying to prove to somebody else or themselves, but there's a no cure what it's called. Bow down. We just don't like to bow down. We just have to surrender. If we truly surrender and humble ourselves, Pride keeps us not surrendering. Humility tells us, you know what? I tried, 22, 22 years I tried. Since I was 16 years old, I tried addiction, tried rehab. I just kept trying. I'm going to no, no. be able to work and get high on weekends. That never worked. It starts out good. That ain't work. So I said, man, what I'm going to just <coughs> get my first check. I'm going to just, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to get a package. I'm going to hustle and get high. Yeah. Oh, it was pride. I was just trying to be, negotiate with addiction. We come up with all these strategies. And all, as soon as I sat on that bench, I was in Bristol, New Jersey, and I sat on that bench and I said, you know what? I give up. And I made it. It's simple as we said, 
I humbled myself and said, you know, that's it. I didn't have no counselor there. I didn't have no pastor. I didn't have no mentors. It was me and the bench, and that bench still there today. I sat on that bench, and I simply said, the white top. I threw it in. I surrendered. I simply said, you know, <coughs> that's it. <coughs> All of y'all are in the possession of that same ability. If you ever get to, I'm not saying you're not there, but if you ever get to that place where you say, you know what? I don't know what career I'm gonna have after this program. I don't know what spouse I'm gonna have. I don't even know if I'm gonna get my kids' relationships back. I don't know. The only thing I know is I'm willing to go anywhere. <laughs> is that I, knew, I didn't know if I was going to get my wife back. I didn't know if I was going to have a relationship with my five kids back. I didn't know if I was going to have a job. I didn't even know if I was still going to have my right mind. The only thing that I didn't know is that I wasn't going back into that. That was me surrendering. But that took humility. It says, it says, without a doubt, it will take a humble person to surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle. That's called surrender. When a doctor, when a doctor um, gives us medicine, usually when they give us medicine, they give us something with the medicine. Anybody know? Say that again. When a doctor, when they give you the prescription, they tell you what? The directions. The directions. When you get medicine, the doctors tell you, this is how you take the medicine. If we take the medicine outside of how he told us, we can't come back to the doctor and say the medicine didn't work. Today, the medicine I'm giving y'all is called surrender. <laughs> and the only thing that you have to do in order for it to work is do what? <laughs> and you can't come back to me and say, hey, I took your minor adjustment program, man, and I ended up on drugs. Well, it ain't mine. I told you what to do in week three. I taught you. You remember? That, that was surrender, the key to victory. Exactly. That was the medicine that I prescribed. Surrender is the medicine that I'm giving you. And the way you take it is you surrender. You can't, you can't complain about something that's not working in your life if you're trying to straddle the fence. Y'all know what I mean, right? This ain't a lifestyle. This, this successful recovery life is not a lifestyle that you can straddle the fence. It don't work for men or women. In a natural, that won't work. <laughs> Spiritually, it won't work. Recovery, it won't work. You can't do. Ah. It's can't. It won't work. You gotta either be all the way over here, or just go back over here. You have to surrender. If you cannot, you can. If you try to play with it, it will lead you on and think that you can do that. But that won't work. How I know? I tried it. <clears throat> I said, I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A <laughs> little bit of this, <laughs> a little bit of that. And I noticed the little bit over here and over there comes to start getting a little short. A little bit of this, <laughs> a whole lot of that. <laughs> it's, it's, this side start getting real little. <laughs> Everybody say anywhere. I want y'all, I'm going to give y'all the next 33, 34, 35, and 36. Y'all read on your own. I'm going to give y'all these um, enemies of your sobriety, and then we're going to be done. Y'all got that? Yeah. 33, 34, 35. Y'all do it on your own. Really, each chapter, this chapter, just go through it. But I'm going to give y'all eight enemies of your sobriety. One of the enemies of your sobriety, meaning these things right here is our, our against you to try to get you to go back. Anybody say anywhere? Anywhere. Yeah. Go back. Go back. One of the enemies of your sobriety, if y'all ain't got no pen or whoever do, are, is boredom. The state of being weary and restless through lack of interest. Boredom is one of the enemies of your sobriety. Another one is self-pity. Dwelling on one's own sorrows and misfortunes. Self-pity is another enemy of your sobriety. 
Another one is loneliness, being without company. If you're always somewhere and you're lonely, that's an enemy of your sobriety. Another one is, watch this, extreme happiness, a very high degree of well-being and contentment. You can be once too extremely happy. It can be your next door neighbor's birthday. Watch it. It's an enemy of your sobriety. The next one is disappointment. The state or emotion of being disappointed. Disappointment is one of the enemies of your sobriety. When you get disappointed, normally when you're in recovery, that addiction tries to get you to go back because it's a disappointment. Another one is isolation. The condition of being isolated. If you constantly are isolating yourself, that's not a good place to be in. That is an enemy of your sobriety. Another one is, I'm tired, in need of sleep or rest or weary. Don't just exhaust yourself giving to other people, even me. I can't keep exhausting myself giving to people and not get rest and get some sleep. And but I'll get tired and worried. That's an enemy of your sobriety. And the last one is intolerant. Watch this. Unable or unwilling to endure. <coughs> unable or unwilling to endure. You notice when you're in recovery, you're unable or unwilling to endure nonsense or stuff that you have to put up with. But when you're in, when you're out there actively using, you put up with anything. Anybody say anywhere? Anywhere. Yeah. But back. back. If you look at page 32, it says the greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender. And that was written by William Booth. Anybody know who William Booth is? Founder of Salvation Army. Who? Founder of Salvation He's the founder of the Salvation Army. And he says the greatness of your power is in the measure of your surrender. What he mean is, if you want me to tell you how great a man or woman can be, tell me how much they're willing to surrender. God bless you. God bless you.